I'm going to move on now and we'll talk about domains and subtypes. This time we're going to work with some buoy features from our ENC data. So let's take a look at what the buoy features look like inside of our viewer here. I'm going to turn off the soundings now. And we've got again some point features here. So this boy lat, boy saw, and boy SPP represent different kinds of buoy features. Now in our catalog, we have one buoy feature class that we want to write to. Okay, so we're going to be reading from multiple layers on the source and writing to one on the destination. If we take a look at the properties of this buoy layer. Notice under subtypes, the buoy type is a subtype field and it's got six different codes for buoy type there. And I just want to um, make a note of one of the attributes in our S57 data. Notice that there is this, um, if I select one of these features, there is this boy SHP field. It's an integer value, but it represents essentially the buoy type and it maps directly, that code maps directly to the subtype code. So that four is a buoy lateral inside of our database. So that's what we're working with this time and we'll again create a brand new workspace here and start from scratch. Now in the annotation workspace I was only reading from one of the tiles in our data set. This time I'm going to set the workspace up to read from all of the tiles within that um, S57 data set. So we'll add the S57 reader again. And this time instead of selecting the open file browser, I'm going to select the open advanced browser. This will allow me to add a directory and to scan that entire directory for data. So we're going to pick our ENC root as our folder. And I know all my files are .000, so I'm going to delete the second one here. And we're going to ask the reader to scan all subdirectories. So again, Workbench is now scanning all of those files for the layers within them. And I presented a um, list of what I put on my canvas. Okay, so just the Bowie feature types this time. Okay, so now on the reader side, let's add our geodatabase writer. And again, we're going to select that same geodatabase we've been working with. And again, we're going to import our buoy feature onto our canvas. And from the writers, import feature types. I'm going to now hit the parameters button here. And I'm going to select the buoy feature from my table list. Now, notice there are two um, parameters here around domains and subtypes resolving domains and resolving subtypes. I'm going to make sure they're both checked on. And we'll come back to what that means in just a second. Right now, what I'm going to do, what we know is that we need, we need to map the names of these feature types, boy saw, boy SPP, and boy lat, to the actual subtype codes. So the first thing we need to do is get those uh, feature type names in an actual attribute. So our feature type extractor will do that for us. We'll connect those up. And if we take a quick look at the parameters here, underscore feature underscore type is the name of the attribute that will put, be put on all of our features. The attribute value mapper is uh, really handy for um, the situation because it will allow us to map source attribute values to destination ones. So if we go into the properties of, the, of this, our source attribute is the feature type that we just created. Our new attribute or the attribute we want to write to is the buoy type. And then we simply need to map our uh, feature type names to our subtype code. So boy saw maps to uh, five, boy SPP maps to six, and our boy lat maps to four. Okay, I'm going to connect that up and go ahead and run that workspace. While that workspace is running, I want to talk about what happens when you resolve subtypes and domains on um, in the parameters of that destination. We expand 
and all of these uh, attributes here. Notice way at the bottom. What we have is a attribute and it's called ODB underscore subtype underscore name. Work with that is also well. if you want description rather than the code, you would work with that GeoDB subtype name. So in the attribute value mapper, I would change this new attribute to GeoDB subtype name and then map to the description. So this one, for example, would be buoy, um, safe water, etc., uh, etc. Et okay, so that's. We won't run that. I just want to see the results of my first run of the workspace. So we'll uh, refresh the buoy feature here. And uh, you probably can't see the coloring on here, but they are colored by subtype code. Let's just take a quick look at the table. And if we look at the buoy type, we see we have values for our buoy type here. So that's an example of writing to um, existing subtype. Um, domains work in very much the same way. So when you, uh, so I can write, uh, let me just take a look at um, the user schema here. So boy shape is one of our coded domains in that database. So notice when I resolve domains, I also get workbench creates this boy shape underscore resolved attribute. So if you have codes, you can write directly to boy shape. And if you have descriptions, you can write to boy shape resolved. And that behaves in the same way that subtypes do. So those descriptions would have to exactly match the descriptions exactly. that are in the domain. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. And Workbench will automatically validate if you end up writing incorrect codes or descriptions. It will throw an error. Domains, however, don't do, are not validated automatically. If you want to turn on domain validation, you would need to go to your geodatabase writer in the navigator pane here, expand the parameters, expand the advanced parameters, and notice there is this um, validate features to write parameter. By default, it's no. If you want to do want to validate domains in the same way subtypes are validated, switch it over to yes. And the way that you've got it configured here, if we wrote to a brand new geodatabase mm -hmm. that didn't exist, mm -hmm. it would create all those domain tables for us. Yes, if it's set up exactly the way it is here. Yeah. Exactly. Um, if you wanted to create your own domain, um, you could actually do that. So from the user attributes tab, say I wanted to uh, create a new attribute here. Uh, look at the types here. I can actually create my own coded domain um, or range domain for that matter, attribute, or my own subtype or subtype code. And I'd have to go into the edit screen, enter my domain name, click create domain, and then enter my codes and descriptions. Now, that's generally not what we recommend. I mean, we recommend that you'd set it all up with our ArcGIS tools beforehand. If you don't have a geodatabase model already um, in place, um, perhaps you have an XML workspace document. So you could reference, again, in the writer's um, parameters here, there's a template file. So if you have an XML workspace document of a schema that you want, uh, reference it with a template file. What FME will do is we'll create that entire model for you first. So it includes domains and subtypes. And then it will load the data for you um, that's, that's represented on the canvas. OK, so let's move on then. So to review what we did, uh, you can write to both the code or the description of the subtype and domain. An attribute value mapper is, could be a very useful transformer in these situations. As I said, subtypes are validated by default, and domains are only validated if that validate features to write is set to yes. You can create subtypes or domains and write to existing ones with FME, but one thing to keep in mind is you can't modify existing subtypes or domains.